Welcome, everyone. We're going to start off with a poem tonight. Mojde, do you want to kick us off? Thank you. Prayer for a trans student whom I failed to shield from being bullied. Praise be the body, which is the reflecting water that holds thy likeness. Praise be. I am thy servant and this child the son, if thy wish it. I have set my face towards thy cause. I have turned each palm upward to carry the warmth this son cannot carry yet because his hands are busy, shielding his face, ears, and heart from his birth name hurled upon him as hail bludgeons. I'm steeped believing in the divine bounty of this child's avowal, praise be. Praise be thy oneness, progressive, thy acknowledging of revelation of human form. I am called upon to be thy ally, recognizing thy creation of this boy sovereign in choice. Praise be, I ask thee by thy name through which the heaven was cleft asunder and the earth was rent in twain and the river Trent's current a rush and the mountains were crushed, not to withhold from me the breezes of thy mercy to turn this water at will, praised be. O creator, neither father nor mother, my heart no longer seeks a gendered vision of thee nor to suffer me to be far removed from the shores of thy nearness. I admit, I am the one who is sore athirst for common kindness among these children, yet caught in the floodplain of this river boy. O oh my Lord, the beat, beat, beat of orphan pronouns storming have made mudslide of these river boys' waters, these living waters of thy grace. I admit, I am but a poor teacher, unknowing I was as storm waters eroded the soft soil into muck. I beseech thee, O oh my Lord, by thy mercy which hath surpassed the entire creation and thy generosity that hath embraced all created things to cause me to turn my face wholly towards damming the waters a storm by voices of children not yet matured so that this river boy may settle again into stable and defined shores. Powerful art thou to do what thou pleasest. Praise be the ever forgiving, the all bountiful, Thank you so, so much, Mojde, for kicking us off with that. Um, hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to tonight's virtual service project. Uh, some of you, I'm sure, may know that April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Um, and so for anyone who may be new to Calling All Crows and our work, just to give you a little bit of background on why this is so important for us, um, Calling All Crows works to connect music fans to feminist movements for justice and equality. We have our Here for the Music campaign that's working to end sexual violence at live music events, shows, and festivals. Um, and we do this by providing training and resources to music fans, artists, venues, and festivals across the country. And so throughout this month, we've been shining a light on prevention and supporting survivors. And so we're especially excited tonight to be able to do that with some artists who are survivors of trauma um, and to have surviving the mic here tonight to talk with us about the work that they're doing to support survivors of sexual violence and trauma. Um, each of us has a survivor of sexual violence, harassment, or abuse in our lives. And surviving the mic is a Chicago-based organization of survivors who are dedicated to creating brave and affirming spaces for survivors of trauma. Um, so their mission is to uplift narratives the narratives and artistic excellence of survivor artists through their reading series, through survivor-centered workshops, publications, toolkits, social media campaigns, and more. Um, Mojde, can you tell us a little bit more about Surviving the Mic and this work that you all are doing? 
I would love to. Thank you so much, um, by the way, counting um, all crows. Um, come on, crows. Oh, I did it. This is exactly what I was afraid of. <laughs> I was like, don't say the name of the band. Don't Not say the first the time it's happened. You're come. totally fine. Come. Okay. All right. Well, hopefully we got some laughter into the room. Um, I was trying to enter the space. Also, space really reverent. But now we just know I'm a flopping human, uh, floppy, floppy human, as we all are. Um, uh, so surviving the mic, mic is really special to me. I'm honored to have entered the role of the new executive director. Um, I'm trying to brainstorm alternate ways to identify what this role is because I don't really feel like I'm an executive of the team as such. Um, and I don't feel like it quite hits the energy of what we are hopefully continuing to evolve into as a um, sort of team run initiative. But we were... Um, started by uh, the brave and brilliant and wonderful Nikki Patan, HBO deaf poet, um, also survivor and big heart and wonderful mama of a wonderful tiny human that I love. Shout out to Bear if you're out there listening. Um, but uh, the project was first um, a workshop that was born out of what we could call the Me Too movement of um, the slime poetry um, community, national community. Um, we had our explosion in 2013. I was a slam master at the time. So I was at the big slam masters national meeting, 100 people in the room. We were all discussing what we were going to do about um, predators in the community. Um, and the leadership of the national slam organization had no plan, had no desire to have a plan. And fast forward just not too long, Nikki moved right back to Chicago and launched this workshop under a grant. Um, and the, there was a small group of us that were participants as artists. Um, we bonded um, very wholly. Some of us had never been able to say the word survivor as it as like out loud, um, had very strong self-mutism. Um, uh, but, but by the end of the workshop, 10 week workshop, some of us could indeed say we were survivors, um, which was its own powerful thing. And when we went on a journey to go perform as a group under this grant um, in Minnesota, uh, we turned to Nikki and said, what do you need? Do you need our resumes? We'll back you. You want to start your organization? Let's go. Um, and so since then, we've been providing um, workshops, live showcases. Um, we had a live workshop open mic almost since the very, very, very beginning of the workshop, there was a correlating open mic that um, moved right into the very beginning of the pandemic, we then transitioned into virtual programming. And for the first year plus of the virtual programming, we were providing weekly engagements, which was a lot of heart and emotional labor and intellectual labor and teamwork. Um, and now we're doing two times a month promised programming. And from there, we shall evolve going forward. Um, we've, we're centering survivors as valid artists, as valid people with valid stories. Um, we live and exist and are born of Black feminist frameworks. Um, everyone is welcome, but do know that if you walk into our space and in some kind of way about Black folk, we might boot you. <laughs> because ultimately, we're will lean into the reality that like the most vulnerable populations um, are often the least heated. And so we wanna make sure to protect um, our spaces. So that's my little, my 10 cents and 20 cents about our org. <laughs> and Mujde, I think you have someone very exciting to introduce to us tonight as well, is that right? Ooh, yes, I do. Um, Atina Danner is in the room. Atina is the most brand newest person that is a part of our um, team. Uh, the team is ever growing, um, but Atina is like a formal part of our internal, in the, in the chats, what do we want to do with the org? What do we want to do with life? How are we feeling today? Ongoing conversations. Um, and, uh, and as it goes, most of the folks that, and we end up folding into our like actual operations sort of, um, internal family are folks that just continue to come and continue to contribute to our community with earnestness and, um, humility and all of the things, um, and contribute as much as they go home with hopefully. Um, and yeah, Atina is a fire poet. 
um, also works in education. Please ask Atina all the things. Um, Atina has a book coming out, which we're so excited about. And part of the reason, I didn't, I mean, I, I do want to just like throw a lot of like light on the book that's coming out just because, right? But I feel like one of the things that I thought was really special about the way that Nikki like centered the mission of this organization in the very beginning was that we really were trying to, not trying to, we were saying and are saying and continue to say, just because we're survivors doesn't mean we're crying in a corner and can't function. Like our art is real and it's valid and it's fire. And uh, Atina's work is such a great example of that. And so I just, I mean, she has a book coming out. So how can we not be like, hey, raise the roof, raise the roof, you know what I mean? I also work with youth, so things like raise the roof seem very normal to me, even though they don't get it. It's like I've aged myself, haven't I? It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Anyways, holla at Atina. Atina, do you want to take us away with another poem of yours here? Absolutely, absolutely. And I'm so grateful for the opportunity to be here with y'all. Thank you very much uh, for including me in this space. My name is Atina Danner, and I'm going to share a poem with you called Instincts. Instincts. Dear Manic Beaver, you were in so much pain trying to build a dam through the deluge. You're still angry at the rain for what was lost, at the wind for what you couldn't hold. I'm sorry. You didn't know how to stop working. I'm sorry. So much was washed away. Dear lonely bird, your song was lovely and your dance was entrancing those pebbles you offered so bright. You did what you were supposed to do and still. For all your fluttering and gathering, well, I am sorry for your disappointment that your shiny things were accepted and then pushed aside. Dear wounded fox, your howling is perfect clear, loud, and heartbreaking. I'm so sorry. You had to free yourself after days and nights of hunger and weakening blood. Dear wild animal, you deserve a warm, safe place, and you will have one. Keep building, keep giving, keep hunting, but first, rest. Thank you, Atina. And thank you, Mojze, for kicking us off here. Um, for folks who are just tuning in, we have Mojze and Atina here from Surviving the Mic. Um, and we're talking about the work that they're doing to support artists who are also survivors of trauma. Um, just as a heads up, this Chicago-based org is just one of the things we're doing in Chicago this week. We are also having a music and lecture event in Chicago this Saturday in Humboldt Park. You can find more information on the Calling All Crows Facebook page, and we hope to see you there. We're coming out strong in Chicago, and we're so excited to, to kick it off with such incredible artists um, and to be able to support such an amazing organization like Surviving the Mic. Um, and so April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month. We're grateful to be able to share here for the music campaign to make concerts and festivals free from sexual violence and to learn about how we can support Surviving the Mic, all while listening, of course, to these powerful, powerful, powerful words and poems from the two of you. Um, and so we started with Moj Day explaining a little bit about the work that Surviving the Mic is doing. Can y'all also talk a little bit more about the ways that people can get involved with you or support your work? Yeah, um, first I'll say that we want to support you um, as a way of um, you getting involved. Can You can invite us into your life in a way to support you. We have programs on first and third Thursdays. Um, you can hop onto our Instagram or our Facebook to find our event pages. 
I know our third Thursday's events are already up and we're going to repost because we just decided that our first Thursdays are going to behave a little bit differently. And we had our first little trial last month. But what we're doing is offering trauma informed um, feedback um, for already created work on first Thursdays. Um, so we, those Thursday events, we, all, we usually do a little check-in for 20, 25 minutes. How are, how's everyone feeling? And then we get into the workshop. Um, and Thursdays are a guided workshop. So you'll be creating new work. And if we have time towards the end, we sometimes share a hotline. In neither scenario is anyone forced to share, um, but we encourage people to. Obviously, if you've come into the room and you want to share your piece, you're probably going to share that. Um, but folks are also welcome to join the space to listen and offer feedback as well and we really encourage that as well because without each other we have we have no feedback we have no um you know foundation to flourish and again we're, the the sentiment of you know really 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 believing and knowing that survivor art is legit and it matters um, sometimes the way that we know that best is just when we show up for each other as much as um, when we get the stage to perform as well. So that's what Can I, I got say for a you. Little something, Moshe? Take the floor. <laughs> I just want to. Um, I just want to kind of offer um, one of the wonderful things about this space, and when I came to it as a participant before being invited in, is that you're not. No one expects you to write a book. Though if you write a book, that's awesome. No one expects you to show anything or share anything. Though if you do, it is awesome and welcome. It's really about getting your story, your ideas, your words, figuring out what you want to do with them. And if you do want to share them, there is a welcome space for you to do that. Um, and you, and as Mojde said earlier, it doesn't have to be about crying in the corner. If it is, that is welcome. Oh, I'm going to go on mute now. It's my dog. Yes, it doesn't have to be about crying. We'll just pass the hat. That's great. Um, yeah, it, you are, it, you are absolutely just invited to participate, to process through things. We tend to have more often than not, we end up having a crisis responder on on the in the room, in the virtual room, so to speak, um, which is super helpful because that way, if anything is bringing stuff up in a way that you really do need a check in, um, then we have that person on 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 staff and in the room only once in a while is somebody who is trained not available and then we'll usually let y'all know at the top of the event so that you're not surprised um but we want to provide that as often as possible um i don't know if the puppies that finished uh barking no okay that's fine uh the, the other thing that i was going to say is that you can follow us at um at Surviving the Mic on all the places. We even have a LinkedIn page, which I haven't updated in a little while. But now that I've said it out loud, I will, I promise. <laughs> uh, I did a big detox. Now we're gonna come back to the social medias. So for, for y'all, um, there are a bunch of writing prompts on our Instagram, go back in time, go enjoy them. They're for you. Um, you can donate to us at Surviving the Mic at gmail.com on PayPal. And uh, I don't know what it's surviving the mic.com. No, dot org. That's what I got for you. There's also, I just want to point out, there's a donation link in this stream. All of the donations from tonight's stream will go directly to surviving the mic to support the work that we're doing. We're raising the roof in celebration, y'all. We got to We got to support survivors. We have to support black women survivors, especially we have to support trans and non-binary survivors especially and so we are so so grateful for the work that y'all are doing and it's such a pleasure to have y'all here with us um y'all and the audience tonight make sure you're doing what you can to support surviving the night connect with them join their group if you feel compelled to donate whatever you can do to support their work Go out and do it today. Um, please continue to watch this stream, to share this stream, and to do what you can. Um, and for those of you who are just tuning in, we're here with Mojse and Atina from Surviving the Mic, who've shared some incredible poetry with us. So far, we've been learning about what they do to support artists who are survivors of trauma and how we can uplift their work. Um, again, donate, share, go to their website, follow them on socials. Get involved, hop on the train, y'all. Um, and Moshe, do you want to take us off with another poem here?
Oh, Mojze, I think you're on mute. My my computer has a mind of its own. It really enjoy it. I think it has feelings about my poetry. I think that's what we're learning. <laughs> um, I wanted to share just a, a small note about the first piece that I performed, uh, which was called Prayer for a Trans Student Whom I Failed to Shield from Being Bullied. Um, it was written in a sort of heightened language um, that is directly derivative of my faith. I'm, I was raised Baha'i, I'm practicing Baha'i, and um, the piece itself is a hack of the Baha'i prayer for forgiveness. Um, and, and that piece is especially important to me right now, um, because for the first time, um, uh, for the first time in my experience of being a practicing person in this faith, I watched someone very vulnerably get up in a space um, that was very like high pressure in my faith community. Um, we don't have clergy, but imagine like an annual thing where a bunch of bishops would get together and chat about what's happening nationally. Um, it was that kind of thing. And uh, a mama um, got up on the mic and said that we need to do better. Um, we need to be caring for our trans and queer youth. And that that really touched my heart. And so I just, I, you know, and she, she was talking about the high suicidality and um, vulnerability and all of the things. So I just, I really wanted to um, share that. So now that I've shared that, um, I have another poem for you. It is called Victim Blind After E. Nina J. Sometimes the feeling is so convincing, I can only. I wonder if the trees we trim to make room for drivers and hikers and houses can feel the absence of their severed arms. I feel the rush of cold down my face like a ghost limb, ghost bleeding from my temple and over my cheekbone to the hinge of my jaw and along the lower bank of my eye, down the mesa of my nose and along the valley before the rise of my quivering lip. Touch the side of my nose, which is just barely a foothill to my mother's narrow domed mountain and my father's low and wide hill. And I feel it like an apple seed burrowed in the core of my cheek. Sometimes the shame is so strong, I can only hear my aunt's low hoot voice informed me that she and my mother were driving into the city to see me because they just heard the news. How they pretend they don't see their eyes big and yellowed like a great horned owl in a canyon tree. They filled my hollow living room with why were yous and where were yous and what were yous, thinking of their right to know how I am, too dried out to remember what I planned to fill them with so I don't say nothing. Some nights memories are so vivid I can only Knowledge is funny. I caught the end of an interview with a criminal psychologist. Her voice was gentle and she, and she said she, she's an advocate for the arrested because memory testimony is unreliable at best. She said, if you really want to ensure that you remember, write it down. I only listen to the radio when I'm driving, so her name is lost. My father called because a friend saw my post on social media and asked if I was doing better. He didn't ask how I was or what had happened, his voice a slow pull. He didn't know what had happened, so he didn't know what to say. I took pictures of my face so I remember the purple crescents beneath my eye. I took a picture of the maroon dimpled and sun softened cherries that I drop next to the frame of my glasses, the lens pushed out where I fell. So I remember the darkened pavement in their shadows. I unloaded every beating moment into documents and statements and Facebook posts and conversations and onto stages. So I remember 
Some nights, these flashbacks are so vivid, I can only see, feel. When a shirt collar grazes my ver the vermilion border of my lip, I feel it like a wildfire in the dark low brush beneath my eye and the deep forest within this seeing socket. I don't get to be blind. Amazing. Thank you so, so much, Mojde. Thank you, Athena, for sharing with us tonight. Um, and thank you to everyone who's tuned in and taken action with us, who's headed to Surviving the Mic's social media and website to learn more. Um, please continue to share this stream, to donate, and to stay connected with us here at Calling All Crows, as well as with Surviving the Mic. Um, again, Wajde and Atina, thank you for joining us tonight. Um, and Atina will end us tonight with one final poem. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see. So this one, this one's pretty short. This is called Blessing of the Instigators. And this is something that I wrote that is very much inspired by my time with surviving the mic. So blessing of the instigators. Bless the table shakers, the talkers out of turn, the power confounders and mic takers, agenda breakers. Bless the bridge burners, protecting the village by any means necessary. Peace be to the bummer outers, the conversation dead stoppers, naked emperor shouters, eggshell stompers, as you receive whispers and private notes of agreement, may solidarity illuminate your courageous path. These are the movements that knock us loose shake us into the sky and out towards the stars. These are the impacts that force us together, drive our roots downward to reach for each other. Incredible. Thank you so much, everyone. We're gonna call it a night. Do not forget to see us in person this Saturday in Chicago, you can buy tickets at the event on our Facebook page. Um, and I'll drop a link in the comments as well. Mojde and Atina and yeah. everyone who's yeah. involved in surviving the mic. Thank you so, so much for all that you do. We are so excited to end Sexual Assault Awareness Month, highlighting the work that you do and supporting survivors. So thank you again. Have a great night, everyone. Please continue to support, to support, to share, to donate. And we'll see you this weekend in Chicago. Have a good night, everyone. Bye-bye.